So uh, welcome to the Town of Deerfield uh, Select Board Board of Health meeting dated uh, June 29th, 2022. We'll convene the meeting at 5.05 p.m. This meeting um, is a hybrid meeting. Meetings normally held at municipal offices are being held remotely with all um, adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the Governor Baker's June 16th, 2021 Act, extending certain provisions of the COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote participation provision of his March 20, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20. Um, the dial-in number is a toll-free toll number, if you'd like to join, is 833-548-0276. Uh, the meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And should you need a passcode, it's 570012. If you go to the Town of Deerfield's website, down on the bottom right at the calendar, you'll see a link for this meeting. And on that link, you'll see an agenda. If you click on the agenda, you'll see a Zoom link that will take you right to the meeting. And you're welcome to uh, join us there. So um, meeting attendees should mute their phones. If you're on a landline, it would be star six um, until asking questions or commenting. All attendees should wait to speak until other participants have finished and state your name and where you're from. So we'll call the meeting to order. Um, our first order of business is to enter into executive session, and then we will return to, to public session as soon as uh, we are finished and um, conduct the rest of the meeting. So um, the select board may enter into executive session uh, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A6, subject to the chair's declaration and roll call vote to consider purchase, exchange, lease, or value of land, this is Merrigan Way, formerly the Oxford property, between the town of Deerfield and New Pro LLC, if an open meeting may have a detri detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the town, which I do declare to have a motion. I make some motion. I'll second it. Thank you. All those in favor, roll call vote. Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And we will also invite in Casey Warren, our town administrator, and I do, and then That's Adam Cox, awesome. our uh, general counsel for the town. And we will be back as soon as we're done, certainly before six o'clock. Welcome back to the Town of Deerfield uh, Select Board Board of Health meeting. We're resuming back from executive session at 6 p.m. So um, the first item here is a public comment. If there's any public that would like to um, have a comment on any of the items upcoming on the discussion items on the agenda tonight. We're happy to listen. We won't have public on uh, comment on those discussions later, but if anyone wants to talk about any of the items coming up, now is the time. I don't see any public hands raised, Jennifer? No? Nope, nobody okay. online. Well, we'll move forward then. We, uh, we don't have any scheduled hearings or appearances. Um, anybody have any select board reports or announcements? I just want to say thank you. Um, you both attended the Waitley Parade? I did not. Oh. No, I had, uh, I did not. I had something else come up this weekend and could not okay. attend. But um, Well, I felt really bad that I was I did out of too. town. That's been bugging um, me all day. I all heard that days. my 350th. Um, that it was an excellent parade. Yep, they had great they weather. Did, um, I had a really great yep. turnout. So I would love wonderful. really to to try and institute some public participation in celebrations because it is very difficult. I you know we we we've asked many times: is there a vehicle we could be in? Is there? But you know, last time we drove my car with a sticker on the side, I right? Was with you, and <laughs> it just isn't the same kind of participation as driving your own Volvo we did, in a we parade. Did do a, we did do a float for Sunderland. We did, we did for Sunderland. And I, I just, you know, and that, it, Savages were wonderful and they donated that, that the driving time. I mean, it took them all the day, it was 110 bed. degrees and the flatbed and all the people came out to decorate. And that, I just want to instill that public participation in our town again. And we just- Well, we have June, there is a parade for us in June of next year. And also um, Northfield is having their 350th. So oh, nice. um, we really should be participating. We need to do more of this 
community uh, gathering and community uh, coming together. Um, there's a lot, and it's been hard over the last three years because people haven't wanted to gather and you know, understandably, but we need to get that sense of community back. Yes, we do. I agree. Um, any other comments on anything for? Um, I drove here tonight. Um, I, I in a new just car. got back. No, <laughs> I just got back from town. No, I still have my old one. Um, but um, I drove down a brand new road. Upper road is beautiful, and I just uh, want yes. to thank Kevin. Um, yep. Scar Scarsborough for um, making sure that that happened. It's it's yep. really lovely. It is. Yeah. There's um, a lot of potholes on that road. Oh yeah, we have a we have a lot more to do. I know River Road is anxiously awaiting, and I know Kevin's got some plans for that yeah, coming but I, up too. I do We've want to thank our plans. highway department and Kevin. Yep. For, for sure. making that happen because it the, was truly lovely and the police for details and all the, the yep. communications i know adam sent out a lot of communication yes, so everybody was, knew what was going on when it was even going on, even so. being away i knew what was happening so yep. that was thank you kevin lovely. Thank, thank you everybody you, adam um well i do and, i yes. do have one thing um for kevin and that is um the uh the railroad the bridge that goes over the railroad tracks at the end of north main street is Dry bridge Look, looks yeah dry bridge is looking like it's developing a sinkhole again so oh, just yes. to put that on your radar yes and we have a meeting with uh dot coming up yes uh, on the 8th that, that's going to be one of the topics for sure yeah i know it is it is in pretty rough shape so thanks for mentioning that okay. anything else anybody um I uh, well, I'll hit on some stuff later on. So I guess um, so. The first discussion. Uh, we'll see. We have a uh, board of health and health agent discussion. Anything you want to touch on, Alex? Alex. Hi. How's Welcome. it going? Good. Um, yeah. Good. What's new? How's everyone? Good. Doing very good. Looking forward to the holiday weekend coming up. Happy for it coming up. Yes. Uh, so just continuing with septic. You know, um, perf tests, um, title five inspections. Uh, did two recreational camp for children inspections today. So camp season is coming in hot. Great. Got a few more tomorrow um, and then later in the beginning of July. And, you know, it's nothing, you know, we got the COVID test yes. right here for the public as well to um, Please tell everybody. Oh, yeah. So, um, as we all know here, we got uh, yes. some free COVID antigen at home eye health uh, test kits that have two test kits uh, in each test kit. And um, I think we have a sign that says limit two per person. Sure. So but that's four your tests. House, but if your household is a little bit bigger, of course, by all means. Yeah. Um, and let's see what's going on. That's We're great. still working on the Nature Grant. Oh, and so people can access that right here in the lobby. Yes, please you know, come in. Come in. Come in and take take a test. If you know we still have COVID cases coming up, um, they're happening kind of all around. So um, again, the variant isn't as deadly as the first, um, but it's still something to be reckoned with, and we still have long COVID. So um, I think Carolyn said maybe twenty percent of the cases are, are that long COVID. Um, so it is important to protect yourself. Please get vaccinations. Well, I think in the fall we'll have another well august 26 is our next um Great. clinic here in town but if you are due for a booster um please try to get it yeah the, cvs the new variant b4 and b5 the south uh, african one is more um, able to be evasive around the vaccine the vaccine so if you are vaccinated it is still mild but um I mean, we're still having deaths in the county. We are. This is. We are. There's still a problem if you're not vaccinated. So yep. please take all precautions and get vaccinated. And and if you're in a group, really a tight group, out in the public with all mixed people that's not your household, please wear a mask. Yeah. And if you're feeling any symptoms or whatever, just come. We have tests here, so please come and take them at the front office. Uh, again, two two per family. Uh, again, unless you have a really large family, um, we want to spread them around to as many people as can have them. It's, and, it's, it's still serious. It's still ongoing. And we still yeah. have the PCR testing as well at the mm -hmm. old senior um, center as well. Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, 930 to 1230. It, okay, will, it will not be on 4th of July, Monday, right. however, right. that they will be closed. But please, please be vigilant still. 
And then we're just working on the nature grant. I think we're still waiting for the SAMs. Yep. Yeah. We, we have been awarded the grant. It's just we have not been able to receive the money. Yep. Because we're our numbers. There. We're getting there. Enough. Version 25 is going to work. <laughs> yeah. Um, and okay. then today was Lisa and Meg's last day. Oh, here. yes. Yeah. I think we should give a really um, Absolutely. big congratulations and bitter goodbye, and, but also the biggest thank you. Huge thank all you that they've done over the yep. years. They were, yep, absolutely. Lisa was, and, and Lisa Meg, was wonderful, wonderful yep. to work with and uh, made such great relationships with our, with our citizens, our seniors, everybody. I've learned so much from her over the last couple of years of being a board of health member and um, relying on her knowledge and her kindness. Um, I, I mentioned this at the last meeting too, um, just how much we appreciated her. So I just want to say um, the tick season is really still happening. People are still getting um, bit, bit, so please um, do tick checks. And yep. then, uh, we have started mosquito trapping and testing. And so far, our mosquitoes in the town of Deerfield are disease free. We anticipate, because it has been so dry this spring, that this will not be a triple E year. Uh, but in more likelihood, it will be a West Nile yeah. um, kind of situation. Yeah. So we're watching it. All right. So um, I ask every meeting for minutes, but I don't see any yet. Alex is Alex. working on them. Alex. Yeah. Alex. Yep. All right. So discussion decision items. So we'll start with the status of Hampshire Lumber. And I think, Tim, were you taking that one? Or you? Yeah, basically, the current situation is we agreed in principle that the survey is going to be done of the two building lots. Okay. Uh, there's no uh, further information about whether that's been scheduled. And um, I think that the town administrator is working on you know, handling the, the financial aspects of things. So I'll let her talk to that point. Great. So um, I did confer with the accountant. There's We could use more than one source, but she and I both feel this is the beginning of the project and we had ARPA. allocated ARPA funds. Absolutely. What we need to do is, and this is, I need from you, Tim, is I just need to know how we, whether you convey this to them that we can start, we just need to know what the cost is so that I can make sure she's aware of it. Um, happy and if there's it. a contract, I just need to be, I need to know what the contract would be. Wasn't our share gonna be 1500 or something? Something like that. Right, so um, specific, maybe you can do this offline, but specifically tell me what you need and I'll, yep. yeah. I'll work with Hamshaw to get it yep. to you. Awesome, thank you. Thank you, Tim. Yep, thanks for taking the we lead on that. Keep really yeah, on that. We talked, Brenda and I talked about it Just, yesterday. Just to give you a heads up, whatever needs to be done should be done by the beginning of August so we can put the warrant articles together for the fall mm -hmm. meeting, especially right and i think we'll also need an appraisal after the survey is done so right that will be the next step okay yep. yes thank you thank you um so oh uh, maybe in my kind of discussions i didn't think about this till now was was just um an update on the marijuana stuff um the the entity that's building a, planning to build or hoping to build across from the um Treehouse is uh, moving along with their process. They've been in and talking with folks in town hall and getting kind of on the schedule or getting ready for a schedule. I know they have some stuff to put together and want to get on the planning board schedule, but I think they've had, um, I reached out to him and he kind of sent back a whole bunch of stuff and processes. Yeah. And I know that they're working with you on all that. So, and so what they did, the, in, the in, intersect in our office was confirming to the Cannabis Control Commission by virtue of signing their certificate that we do have an HCA in process. Great. And so I, I signed that document so we could keep that process going because Perfect. he had a time limit. Yeah, thank you. No, I know he's got a tight time limit. He really wants to get building as soon as possible and really wants to get in front of the planning board, CBA, where, wherever else he has to be. So conservation commission, all that. So, uh, but they have a great plan and they're moving ahead. So I think it's gonna be a good project. Really looking forward to uh, seeing that come, come and happen. I, yeah <laughs> yeah i know after all these years <laughs> yeah but i think i think it's a, a good plan and they're they're full steam ahead um the next item is parking on sugarloaf street and i know that like sugarloaf street is a state highway 
Tim. This actually came from Tim. Okay. So yeah, it's please. Part, I did include it. If you look in your packet, you will see it wasn't in the original packet. I found it a little bit later. Okay. It's the next, it should be the next item in before you look back in the front, right after okay. your agenda. It should be right yep. there. It's an example of a draft agenda. Oh, with this DOT. one here? Oh, yes, yes. This is for DOT. And it right. includes various things. So, yep. Tim, would you like to explain what you received um, for complaint? Yeah, basically, I just heard from uh, people who use Sugarloaf Street regularly that during church services, because there's uh, two churches that sit directly across from each other, um, and one of them doesn't have any parking, apparently, um, a situation oh. arises where during services, the bicycle lanes are obstructed on both sides of the street, and um, the actual uh, area of uh, drivable surface is, is very diminished. So I just went in to, to um, mention that to the, the Catholic Church uh, and the, the new father called me and we talked about it and I said, I'm, I'm just making you aware that we're going to probably have a public discussion about this and that we're going to be meeting with um, MassDOT about what, what, are, what is allowed on the road and so forth. And um, so he was fine with that, saying okay. that, uh, you know, he explained from his position that they have enough parking at the church, um, but that sometimes parishioners park on the street for convenience reasons. And I said, well, we keep them informed about what uh, MassDOT says about parking on that road. Okay. Yeah, because it's tough. It, it blocks the new bike lanes, right? Right. And all yeah. that. So, I mean, it is for a short period of time. It is. Services, but, yep. um, you know, at least being aware, we can make an exemption or, you know, Sure. work with the police to decide how we handle this yeah well it is nasty state. and the reason it's on there is it's dot and they right. control the road technically they do and right. we've had this is the whole discussion around the common and you know everyone's like well don't lose the parking when you redo the common and like you know there's spots parking there but that's really not it's a state state highway still so we do have to have that discussion exactly. and see what's allowed what's not do they look the other way do they want to enforce that or how that all right happens when we take take over if we take over it kind of thing right. okay so that's that was two full thing it gives yep. you the opportunity to hear about the parking complaint but also Perfect. see the list of items that i've compiled so far yep because we have received another complaint from carol Wazowski. and i don't want to leave about the dot about yeah about the, the still water right access yeah okay there was a period of time where i wasn't able to communicate with tim meyer who mm -hmm. was the person i had talked to about the the still water yeah i think it might be useful to add that to that discussion agenda I agree. so that they get a better picture of what this what the issues are there yep um and then the next one is the water main uh project complaint is on the agenda here it is um, i know we got a letter from a bunch um uh, quite a few of the residents on eastern ave and graves i think or... and kevin's prepared to talk about this okay. too hey, kevin so we received a complaint letter yep. it's not our project it's true um and kevin actually wrote a response to it that's okay. fairly comprehensive so Kev, do you want to tell them what you responded with well um yeah sure give me a complaint. second get to it um so basically um you know do you want to really don't want the original letter read do you no no that's fine okay good no. yeah because it's pretty lengthy yeah. um long long story short is, is after reading his letter i just basically let him know that on um, you know the water district does not report to the select board they're completely separate from the town and they were going to have to you know anything really needs to be dealt with them but what i could tell them is is we collectively the town we've got some sewer mains on eastern ab cross street and a little bit of uh grave street that are going to end up having to be replaced. So yep. with that being said, after all construction is done this fall, yep. plan is to mill and resurface all three roads. You know, right. and we also have intentions to go down and try and give a skim coat to go ahead and try and smooth out some of the rough sections in the very near future. Oh, okay. Um, in the meantime, great. Yeah, just just to get us by for now. Yep. So so with that being said, that'll take care of that part. But now, when you're talking uh, Grave Street. And talking with the water department they're basically saying that that one may be going a little bit quicker because cocot has the entire um contract to do that where it's not a quasi modal like the first one was where you know the cocot would do part of it and then the then the water department would do part my understanding is is when they go over to grave street 
everything is on COCOT, so everything should move quite quickly. Um, but again, they're not replacing the entire line, exactly how much of the line they're replacing, I'm not sure, but I know it's on the easterly side of the um, end of the road, I should say. So that's pretty much where we're at with that. I mean, again, you know, this is out of our control. Um, you know, as they were doing any type of construction there, it was their responsibility to make sure that if any potholes or anything like that occurred that were within the area that they excavated, then that's on them. You know, if it's not the areas that they excavated, if it's, you know, previous to their area, um, then that's on me. And yep. I'll be honest with you, we went out there and we looked and we got to get back out there again. There is some stuff that, that is our responsibility. And there's a little bit that's the water district's responsibility too. So between the two of us, you know, we'll get the potholes taken care of and uh, we'll just kind of run with it from there. My understanding also is all of their cross pieces are already done. So realistically, you know, what we're waiting on the milling and the paving is the sewer work for that section of the road. Yeah. Um, and I prefer not to just being frugal because it's like a, well, now it's probably doubled. Um, it's anywhere between eight and ten thousand dollar mobilization fees to be able to get people in and out between your milling machine and your paving crews. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm going to pay that, I only want to pay it once, and that way I get all three roads done. Right. Um, that, right. So that's the plan: is um, to get all three roads done this fall. So long as we still got enough Chapter Ninety One. Right. And I wanted to um, maybe get with you at some point and talk about like the sewer work i know we talked a little bit offline mm -hmm. about do, do we put something on the annual town meet or you know the um special town meeting coming up or i know you have some money in in you know in the sewer fund to be able to do some some stuff and you know see how we go up go out to bid or kind of just get an idea of what we what that total bid kind of looks like and exactly you know and again like you said it depends on on what we get for pricing back yep. um you know because if we can we can do it on the the cheaper side, you know, everything's still going to be done, you know, to yep. code, but if we can get it done a hell of a lot cheaper Then maybe I might be able to be able to just take it right out of my sewer line maintenance. Right. You know, exactly. but, it, but if it turns into a large bid that has to go out and it gets really ugly, then yeah, then it, we're, we're going to need more that. money. Okay. Sounds good. We'll talk then. Yep. Well, thank you so much for, you know, for addressing their concerns and sure. you know, we got the letter too. And we just, you know, again, it is not, it's not all, we don't have a lot of control over it, but we do work together with them. And I know that they, they are anxious. It's been very hard to secure valves, piping, like all kinds of material. It's much mm. harder to do than it was several years ago. So I can imagine they've been waiting on a lot of parts and um, whatever. It might've slowed up the project some, but. Um, plus plus they've got equipment issues right now too. I guess right now they don't even have a dump truck. Gotcha. So there must be something up with the dump truck. It's at the shop being repaired. So. But yep. by the sounds of it, you know, you made it sound like it. He's like, I got nothing to haul material with. I'm like, okay, you know, no harm, no foul. I said, you know, we can work together on this. So yes, yeah, if we can offer um, some help. That'd be great. Exactly. You know, we'll we'll do what we can to go ahead and, and try and make things work. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, no next item is uh, Ostrowski's APR land update. I understand they're not moving forward. Or I, we were. You'll see. There's a copy of it. We were notified by the project manager that the Ostrowskis have declined to move forward with the project. They do have a time period they can revisit that. Mm -hmm. And it's in the email, Michelle Padula mentions that. Saw that so yeah. we, could, we could see another request come across our desks, but at this point, it looks like this particular iteration is done. Okay. And we just paid out for the fifth property, we just right? Paid yeah. Out for okay. Fisk. So we wouldn't have expected to pay this out until next May or June. Gotcha. So but, even and maybe they'll come back. If and they, and they could make that change. They could decide to do that. So okay. we just wanted you to know yep. I have not sent this. I wanted to notify you guys first. Um I have not sent this to CPC. Okay. So we'll need to let them know as well. All right. Um but Thank we you. wanted you to know because it sort of comes to us first. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dave. You're um, next, Thank Jennifer. She Thank you, it. Jennifer. <laughs> um, the awesome. South, South Deerfield uh, wastewater phase one upgrades. We have a change order, which number is four. number four, which is a reduction. There's actually a couple of ads and then a larger and then reduction. An so it really winds up to be about uh, $5,203.98 
um, is the total that we're reducing with this change order. Um, there were three items. It was uh, there was some additional expense for adding a plant water piping and materials um, for a request for information on 16 and 17. And then uh, change order 19 was additional expense for increase in height of the clarifier sump walls per the RFI of 19. And then the uh, the large change order was the credit for changes to the aeration tank repairs. Um, per the uh, DPC directive email on 5-5. And this is when they had uh, a team out and addressed the, the, a lot of the aeration tank work that we're doing because we're splitting them up. And um, uh, we had to look at the condition of the walls and we put a lot of money in one of the, the alternates for um, concrete work. And we weren't sure if we were gonna have to take the wall down or how much that was gonna need. And they were able to kind of remove some of it, injection, um, a lot of the cracks and then they'll resurface the whole thing. So in the end, we, we saved money long-term on, on doing the aeration tank work. So, um, so that gave a, a, a really decent credit. Um, Do you need us to vote on it? Yes, uh, well, yes. And then I've and then a uh, vote for me to sign or somebody Correct. to sign, I guess, needs chair to sign. To sign. So, um, so yeah, if I could have a motion to approve change order decrease, um, change order number four for, of 5,000, $203.98. Um, I will make that motion and authorize the chair to sign. And I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. All right, thank you very much. Okay, so then um, then we have, um, oh, the South County Senior Center update. So I had a boo meeting um, last week. Last week. Last week, <laughs> I can't think of the day. Yeah, um, last week. So we, um, everybody knows that that building right now is, is is in disrepair. We we have really nowhere for our, our three staff members to work, have a station and desk and private place for consultations, all of that kind of thing. So we have been um, looking at alternatives of, you know, right now as everybody knows, we're we're renting space for um, programs at the at the family church, family parish church in Deerfield, and then we are um, looking at remodeling the. Uh, church for a space uh, for programs and maybe some offices that won't get done until winter sometime um, with the help that we have coming to help. In the meantime, um, we really need a space for our, our people to work out of. And there, there, was, uh, there was an idea to uh, lease space in Sunderland there's a place called, it was a tea trekkers. It's right kind of across from snows landscaping, small building. It has space for offices and, um, and you can fit small programming. You could have a book club. You could do a, you know, puzzle time, some cards. You could do, you could do some separate programs. It was intriguing to us because one of the goals is to try and push programming out to the other two towns. So it isn't just a Deerfield you know, programs, can we, can we do stuff in other towns? And, and we're starting to do that. We had the walk uh, in Sunderland and um, Jennifer could talk more about all the different things that she's thinking about and working on to try and expand our reach and, and get more people um, using um, the senior center and they have been, which has been great. Um, really just two seconds to say, I'm really proud of um, Jennifer and what she's been doing uh, with, with the seniors and really growing that and doing a great job. And it's, I think is loved by our seniors and, and really doing a great job. So she's been looking for a space that her um, Sue and um, Joanna Blank, Chris, uh, Chris our, um, uh, our outreach coordinator could, could work at and then mm -hmm. still they, they could have storage. So the, the issue is they don't really have good space for storage of all our perishable items. They could do the um, food, you know, the food pantry thing there. there. There's a lot of things they could do there. So she was looking into leasing on that. We were gonna have a meeting today. That's been postponed. There could be a possibility of office space in one of the current church buildings that are um, 
that may be available. There, there's just different ideas she's looking at. It was too soon to kind of settle on anything, but I just wanted to kind of update you all on kind of where we're at, what we're looking at, what we're trying to do. And then um, I did ask at our last BOO meeting, where do we see ourselves in five years? Do we still want to be a tri-county group? And the, I think the resounding answer was yes. Now it's um, Joyce uh, Palmer Fortune is the new member from Waitley who's going to be working um, with us and we're so happy to have her. Uh, she's, she toured all the different spaces this week uh, with Jennifer last week or this week. Um, so uh, so we've got new ideas coming, new staff coming. So we're all kind of just thinking about where where do we house our employees for the meantime. I'm thinking a bit about the space when we have that open there and do we have enough space to fit all the things we want to do. If I think if we take out the pews and redo that, this is getting off subject, but we need more office space and there's just not enough for nursing and them and a private space to talk with people, private space for uh, for nursing. So I, I know we want to get nursing to the to the seniors or maybe maybe this well, space here in the meantime. Right now this space is available. Uh, uh, in the meantime. In the meantime, we can use the space, but mm -hmm. Lisa was only seeing eight to 10 people a week mm -hmm. in this space. And the whole point, you know, my the, the reason why I have pushed for so many more hours with Cindy Majewski and having us mm -hmm. leave the for cause is because we were paying so much money for eight to 10 people. Right. We want and, more than that. And we've got to, the seniors have been truly isolated in COVID. There's a huge need and, and having Cindy work with the seniors at the senior center during senior center hours is going to expose her to a lot more people and, and having a space at the church where she can, meet with people individually is going to increase the numbers dramatically and so and, and the exposure i agree and i'm, I'm saying um i agree with that when it's exactly. a private space right, right. So, so in the meantime until we can get private space probably can't do it at the father the family one we know we can't we there's don't not a private space private there but space we there. can entice okay. go visit and entice to come down and visit yeah. here what I, what I envision in this is a transition is to have cindy still be at the senior center, but then have office hours, you know, or set so she up an appointment. Talk with generally people. with people, people, but if right. there's a private consultation, it's she done at come, a private facility. Right. She can meet with them. I think and, she and, should keep it to Wednesdays too. And people and, are used to it. Yeah. Well, she can keep the Wednesday hours, but the idea is that she could set up whatever is convenient with the person. Of course. Um for further you know, right. Anything that is private. Because Lisa, Lisa was doing done. other towns too. They this would be if she has space here. I mean, in the meantime, right. She could I, use I know this. we're short of space. But we are eventually be, we're gonna need this, it. This this is just a transition to I mean, I envision us being able to do the church without, you know, some we don't you need you don't need you just need a space that it's has private. some some privacy. But and it has I to think be that's, handicapped accessible and, and a I, bunch of other right. things. Right. And I and think, I think we, we could can, do something in that general in that sanctuary area. Yes. Yeah, I do I do too. So we, we're we looking at to, I what, what we need to do is is clean that out. Yes. And then while we're in the process of cleaning it out, we can discuss what, how we want to set it up. Yep. And so and I know they're working on engineering estimates to try and get the floor, you know, so, or at least what that costs so to do that. We're, steeple. We're gonna order a I mean, we should order a, a dumpster. Yes, and we, we are. Actually, Jennifer and Jennifer's Trevor on that. Yeah, we're oh, working okay. on it together. Yeah, well, then, working on then we could just, I mean, I will draft my kids. And... Good. We need as many kids. We'll see if the yeah. Yeah, baseball team wants to come together. And I know. No, no, We've got I'm, a lot to get rid of yeah. in the 1888 building. We've got a lot to get rid of over yeah. there. And I want to get those shelvings ordered. I, I keep I, dragging my feet I on will that. But just make sure that we have yeah. people available. We'll have like a little, little work group or something. So, okay. So that was really all. I just want to just update people on what's happening there. And that's that. Um, the 357 Dog Road, uh, 357 Greenfield Road <laughs> dog complaint is not, um, we, we don't have a final complaint, uh, final report. report from the, uh, the dog officer yet. So I'm passing over this until we have that and we'll, we'll circle back on that. 
Um, we have a, appointments. Yes, you have lots of appointments. Okay, so I want to pull those out. Let's get that list. You had a request from David Sharp, I believe, to yes. serve on ZBA. Okay, and um, so we have to talk about. So you have annuals, you have other requests. We have the transfer station sticker sales. I think that's what Kevin's sticking around for. Um, right. So do you want to, would you like them to deal with yeah, that? Yeah, let's first, do stickers Kevin? first so so Kevin can be done with his night. That'd be cool. Move on. Um, thank you, Kevin. No, thank you. No, long story short is is, is because um, they're so shorthanded and in the uh, clerk's office and they're like just super overwhelmed there. Um, we're selling the stickers at the transfer station, but that in turn really kind of overwhelms us there too. Yep. Um, but with that being said, out of the two different places, I think this is the best place to spend money would be for us being the, the transfer station to go ahead and bring somebody in three days a week for the next six weeks. Um, basically it works out to like $2,200 and they would be selling the stickers uh, three days a week between now and uh, August 1st is the okay. standard of what we've done in the past. Right Now, now because um, they're really not doing any at the um town hall you know in case you know unless somebody wants to mail it in right um or if somebody does it online the problem is you do it online then there's an added cost nobody wants to pay that right and, and you know you do it on the other way you know then you have to add in the the um, postage because that's not covered right um, people, people don't like that so what i'm really trying to get at is i'm not sure what it's going to look like after august 1st that's fine. You know, if it's if it's it if it's if it's absolutely crazy, then we may end up having to keep um the person on. If it if it backs off to the point where where I'm hoping it's going to back off to, because hopefully that will give us a full month of somebody that should have already gotten their sticker. Yeah, yeah. July first is the day you're supposed to have the sticker mm -hmm. on, which is Friday. Yep. Um, but then after that, uh, you know, like I said, we'll just have to see. So my request is, is see if we can hire, um, we've already picked somebody out, uh, Bob Olette lives over yep. a local guy. Um, right around the corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, Allen drive, um, very, you know, very personable, nice guy. People like him. Um, right. everything really seems to work out well. And I would like, um, the ability to, uh, officially hire him. Sounds so I good. drafted the letter. All you yep. have to do is say, bless you, Casey. Bless you, letter. Casey. Send the letter, please. <laughs> and, and oh, we would like to vote to hire Bob Ouellette. Yes. To I will make that motion to um, hire Bob Ouellette. As a temporary, temporary position. Temporary sticker 15, sales. 15 bucks sticker an hour. Yeah. And I'll second it. Yeah, uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And thank you very much for... Thanks. Excellent. Taking a whole list. Thank you, Casey. Everybody. Thank for you for tracking down some someone. Help. Thank you, Bob, for being reason. willing to do this. Yes, thank you. For hey, can I just ask one more quick question? Is sure. um, it's in reference to the the trees that we took down around uh, town hall. Yep. All right. So I was I I attended the three fiftieth um meeting the other night and explained that you know those what are we going to be doing with these trees? What are, right. what am I doing with the wood? We have Am I doing room. live? If I'm doing live, he can't do it where they are, which means now they have to be retransplanted or transported to somebody else that's got a bandsaw, which we have a source of that, but I don't have a price on that yet. So what, and I'm, and I'm looking for direction because I know the 350th can't sell it. I know right. the select board can't sell stuff, no. but the friends of Deerfield can. Mm -hmm. um, I reached out to Chris Harris and, and we haven't been able to connect yet, but it's basically, what do you... If we put something together, would you guys be willing to sell it? If you're willing to sell it, what would you like to sell? Would you like to sell, you know, and I've had multiple suggestions of the live edge, um, make them like two, two and a half inches thick. And then that way you can have a really nice bar top. Um, yeah. Some people have come out and said, you know, well, how about benches? Well, the benches won't work that well for the bottom, you know, because people are going to end up scratching their legs and there's going to be a yeah. problem. Right. Um, but like my wife said, you know, you can use it for the backing. Um, you know, do you want to do keychains with the the town logo in it? Do you want to do a, a town of Deerfield 350? You know, I, no idea what people want, but if you want something done with this wood, we need to start jumping on it. And yeah. the only thing that I have the ability to do is to get it down to a raw form, being 
thickness and length. Right. After that, that needs to go to somebody else because I am not a woodworker. Right. Um, right. And to, to what somebody may want to do. You know, I truly have no idea. And we they weren't long enough to do um, structure for the band shell or anything like that. I was just trying to think if we. Yeah, it. no, not really. I mean, we, we would to be honest with you. What we'd be able to do is we'd be able to get some lumber out of it on maximum 10 feet long. That's pretty much what the lengths of the um, mm -hmm. logs are. But mm -hmm. some of the logs have got multiple that come yeah. out. And, and, you know, by the time you really look at it, you might get, you know, six or seven four by fours out of it and then that's it the rest is you know. well that's what i was wondering if maybe like i was thinking like at the town park could we use it for uh fencing or you know some guardrail or something you know what i mean like it's it's, it's a red oak you know oh, i mean not really you, good for that okay yeah i mean if it's, well, I really if it's something idea then i i was going to just let the friends of deerfield determine if there was um happy with that i think right. they, they just say didn't the 350th want kevin to deal with it no, the through what we were at the meeting, the three fiftieth knew that we could not make a decision on selling it because yeah. we were not right. authorized. Right. So what the three fiftieth said was that the friends of Deerfield should determine what they want to do, and that and I said afterwards that if there was leftover wood, certainly Kevin could have it for like a shed yeah, at sure. the transfer station or yeah, whatever. That makes sense. Lumber towards that, but. If if they need to determine what they what is they should want to sell for whatever they want to do yeah whatever they, as a fundraising and then but they need to determine pretty soon because Kevin right. needs to know whether he can use the wood or not yeah and and we and Bill Lamore has been very nice to I know, store, to store it, it and yeah. let it dry up yeah. there but we got to get going on it so um, hopefully you can connect with Chris. And, and if it's all right with the board, we just totally. let Chris and Kevin sort it out. Me, totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure everybody was well aware of, no, that's fine. of what was going on. You know, I was, I was finally able to get in touch with Bill because, um, you know, we've been playing like tag back and forth for literally months. <laughs> um, and I finally saw him and I was like, drove up the driveway and I cornered him and I was like, hey, what's going on? And he explained it to me. I was like, oh, okay. So, yeah. um, and to be honest with you, I didn't recognize the fact that he does not have the ability to make live cuts like that. Okay. He, he can well, do dimensional he, lumber, he can but he can't. Up to 20 inches, I think. 20 inches, right. Yeah. And, and obviously some of it is wider. Yeah. So there's there's quite a bit of it that's 30, 30 plus 30. I got a couple that are 36 inches in diameter. Yeah. So there's there's quite a bit of inches are there, Kevin? How many? How many? Um, I wanted, well, there was one, one, two, there was three trees that were taken down, but I want to say there's probably maybe six pieces on average. Yeah. Um, there might be seven, you know, I, I have to go back because what literally what I did was is, um, I took pictures of each log with a tape measure on it because that's how I was going to try and yeah. figure out what we had to get pricing on it. And then Lamore got it and then it just kind of came out of my hands for a while. Yeah. Um, but I do have all the documentation on my phone uh, where I can go ahead and I can pull out, I can tell you how many pieces there were and, and uh, what the diameters are, so mm -hmm. not a big deal. I can I can put that together real quick on an email and just shoot it out to you. Yeah, I was just interested. I was looking behind at the uh, I know. symbol, and I'm thinking, He's cut perfect. cut across, burned in wood. You know, yes. would be really nice. But uh, nice little tables yeah. like that, yeah. I think, would be really but, cool. Uh, yeah, I talk to Chris Harris too because you know now that yeah. I'm, okay. I'm not on the I'm not on that uh, committee anymore, but uh, or that nonprofit. But, yeah. Uh, you know, some of these, uh, I hope they can come up with something interesting. That'd be that, great. Mm. I totally support whatever you guys come up with. I think it's a great idea mm -hmm. to use this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Very good. Like I, I said, just wanted you everybody to be aware. That's all. You Thank know, you. Whatever you decide. Oops. So, uh -oh. What's your okay, point? So at? for other, um, Kevin, oh, she's oh, raising her hand. Before Kevin leaves. Um, so this goes back to appointments. And the reason I'm asking Kevin is he knows more people than I do. Um, public weighers, you'll notice you don't have any public weighers. We normally have public weighers come in. They usually come in. We already um, yeah, some. We've we done some of them, but there's others that Pat was waiting for. So she and I had a conversation about the fact that public weighers, we get noticed, even though they know what the process is, we get notifications that they need them relatively quickly and they have to wait for two weeks for the select board to vote or somewhere in that neighborhood. 
So she asked me if there was a way that we could facilitate this. And I thought about this, but didn't have a chance to talk to Kevin. Um, would the board be willing to delegate the appointing of public weighers because they have specific jobs um, to either myself or Kevin so that we could facilitate them be able, being able to comply with the law? Because they have to have weighers up at True to work those, work that equipment. Um, and so that was the question that came up or to have some sort of quicker process. I, I don't have a, a, I don't have a problem board. with I that know. as long as um, somebody is still checking to see if there's any complaints. Um, right. You know, I, I don't, in all the years that we've been doing it, I think there was only one person that we had a problem with and we did not reappoint them. But so somebody needs to just check that there's no, no complaints, that's all. But otherwise I don't really, I mean, it's just. I thought we were gonna get a full list of our appointments because each week we have this list and it's always partial and I don't really know what we've done and what we haven't so done. I'm really what confused. Seeing, what you're seeing is what <laughs> is left. Um, if you want me to go print it, I no, can No, that's fine. I, maybe but, when we're done, just to have a full list of. So that's what you had held on. You voted, so and, and is, you have it in your book. The last, the last list you had from the last meeting is in your book, Trevor. Well, so you held on three different things. Yep. And ZBA appointments were one. Um, well, CPC was and we did. not. CPC not. wasn't completely filled out. And that was one thing actually we still have had asked me about that. The CPC, the person from recreation is going to be Sue Antonella. Yeah, I, I can I can talk about uh, CPC. Just okay. The, yeah, let him do it. Yeah. But uh, so the C, what happened at the end of the day? Um, Pat notified me. Kevin has his hand raised. Sorry. Go ahead, Kevin. No, no, sorry. Uh, I just I get when you get a second. I just got one more quick update about the transfer station and the swap shed, but. Oh, okay. Continue Good. what you're doing first. All right. So Sorry. We got a quick update from Sue Antonellis through Pat that recreation is going to have her serve as the CPC, as the appointment from that committee. Okay. On CPC. All so, right. and we literally, that happened right before Pat left at 10 after four. All right. So, so we can do that one right now, right? We can do so that we'll one. You oh. can make some decisions on ZBA. You still have the e emergency management appointments. So make a, a, a motion to appoint Sue Antonellis recommended by the Recreation Committee for the Community Preservation Committee. I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, so we can go through the CPC. Um, mm -hmm. The CPC... I'm, I'm leaving that committee. And, and so uh, I held a meeting to try and reorganize this um, last week, uh, at which time uh, Lily, Leslie Dwight was appointed as the chair pro tem temporarily. Um, Alan Sweetman would remain. But so if we want to go through open spaces, recommending Alan Sweetman for reappointment. Okay. And he's not he's on, on this he's list. He's not on this list. That's so why. that's what I'm wondering. Like, that's what I mean. Like all the other people like Lily is not. So I don't know who's on so, it, who's still left. Right. So everybody apparently is reappointed every year. Okay. Yes. Um, that's there are the nine, point. there are nine positions. So um, open space, historic commission, housing, um, <clears throat> planning board, conservation commission, um, recreation committee, and then select board recommended appointee and moderator appointee. I don't know what the moderator appointee is. I don't right. care about his appointments. Right, well, um, but all I was gonna say is that um, in the past, Leslie Dwight had been the moderator appointee and what we were hoping to do is have her represent housing and then find another person for the moderator to appoint. Mm -hmm. They are apparently reaching out to people to fill a select board recommendation and um, moderator recommendation. And so the other people, uh, the the um, planning board is recommending that Anne Mary Cloutier be appointed. Instead of Annalie? Yes. Okay. Annalie's 
done this and Anne Mary has agreed to do it. Oh, well, that's nice. Thank Conservation you. Commission yeah. is working on um, both getting a final member and also um, at their next meeting designating whom they want to put forward. Okay. Um, so that's in progress. So we could we could appoint Ann Mary right now. Exactly. Okay. So I'll make a motion to appoint Ann Mary Cloutier as a uh, planning board recommendation. Recommendation. I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you, Should Ann Mary. Should we do Alan Sweetlin as well then? Yep. And what's he? He was. He's under, open space. Open space. Okay. Uh, um, I would recommend or make a motion to for appointing Alan Sweetland as the open space um, position. And I will second that. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And I will just add that Alan is looking at this as possibly being his final year. Okay. So he's been on the committee for a long time. He's yeah. got a lot of institutional knowledge, so. For sure. Um, and then the Historic Commission is recommending Ben Benson again. Okay. Oh, so is he uh, still? Then I will oh, make a. Okay motion to appoint Ben Benson as a historic commission appointee to the CPC. And I will second that. Uh, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Well, that's good. So there's... So then there's Leslie White. Um, I mean, and she's on the senior housing ad hoc, ad -hoc committee, committee. Uh, chair. And so she was the moderator appointee. In order to fill out the board, it, it made more sense to have her represent housing and then find another person to be the moderator appointee or the select board appointee. And there's a housing. There's a housing it, component. Yes. There is a housing component, but I thought we don't have a housing authority. We don't. No. So this is a question that select board has to answer. Um, is it sufficiently similar? Uh, do, does the CPC need to change their their bylaw, one possibility for them to do would be to make them all appointed by the select board. I mean, you know, this could, they, you could you just change the way that the CPC is put together. But I think, um, I think I would make a motion that we would appoint Lily as the housing, for the housing slot, because that is as similar as we're, I mean, we're never gonna have a housing authority. Yeah, but it's written as housing authority in the bylaws, so you have to be careful about what so we that's have to change the, bylaw the interpretation is. So what Tim's asking is, hey, Casey, find out if legal will let us do this. Right. Yeah. And then, I, yeah, hey, I guess select board, let's consider making a change. So why don't we right, appoint Tim? her? Point her as the moderator. Right, for as now. Select board, we're, we're, oh, the select board for yeah, now. The moderator. Well, the moderator, we could... You got to reach out to Dan Graves and say, "Will you reappoint Leslie White as the moderator?" Appointment? Well, let's just appoint Lily as our select board then appointment. Well, because then, if yeah, it's easier for us to find somebody than to have Tim to have the moderator. Yeah, right? I'm saying that yeah. the moderator is not going to spend any time finding somebody. So we'll spend if we the time. Get okay, from Casey to reappoint her as housing, housing then it then, frees up somebody. Then we can say moderator here's another person for you okay to gotcha okay so and in the then, meantime we'll appoint yeah. from the from the uh from the town moderator yeah, ask, to ask him to approve leslie as his appointee i will second that motion oh we don't we, we don't, don't need to we appoint don't need her. to so we're waiting right yeah, well so oh, she, okay. she's currently there, but uh, we're okay. going to let her. Yeah, but doesn't her term expire? We're going to let figure out what gets Yeah, she <laughs> needs to, she <laughs> needs to be. Doesn't her term expire? It does, but they don't meet again until late September or oh, October. Okay. But in the meantime, we can find out about whether we can appoint them in a house oh, or whether yes. they have to okay. change this one. Oh, okay. So we'll work on that. Yes. All right. Yeah. And then we still need to find somebody from the select board. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. No, that's you guys fine. need to find somebody. And we I, need to I find just wanted to make sure one, that two, three, if Lily's term was expired, that she had the ability to. Yeah, she's being reappointed by the moderator, and then we'll work out the housing question. And if we can put her on the housing, then we'll find somebody else to be the okay. moderator. Oh, no, that makes sense. Yeah. And then we'll also find somebody for the select board. Uh, okay. And the cap. And, oh, go ahead. Yeah. And then the Conservation Commission is has a meeting next week, and hopefully they will have finalized to put somebody forward. Recommend. Okay. The Capital Improvement <clears throat> Planning Committee, we're going to leave that vacant until we have a person in that position, right? We're not going to put Sarah 
like Sarah we or Jen. Are, no, those. that's what I wanted you to revote. So the reason you see that is because the bylaw actually requires the person serving as the treasurer collector, which okay. isn't Sarah. And Sarah's Sarah. Not only do we not want to add anything to Sarah's right. plate, but really, uh, Barbara hadn't served and worked with that committee at all. At all. Right. So yeah. it's it's a twofold piece of information you know, do you, you have two ex officio members, the town administrator and the treasure collector. So right now we don't have somebody serving as the treasure collector when we would get somebody in either in an interim basis or on yeah. as a permanent hire, we would expect that person to serve unless the board wants to go back and change the bylaw. Yeah. I, so we'll I think it's that. important that the person try to participate, Yeah. but we are, again, we're not going to meet until Sometime yeah, and the thing about late, it is, is it comes through the budget process so yeah, often. It's I mean, me December first, de December first, the application process has started, and yeah. So okay. I, I mean, I'm not too worried about it. We'll, yeah. I just, just wanted keep it you on to know radar. that that's what it's yeah. Said. Keep it on the radar. I I think we should have someone that is active. I would appreciate someone mm -hmm. more active. Mm -hmm. so Brenda, Brenda usually assignments. participates, and you participate, right? But I I feel like it would be important to have it could be helpful but let's see yeah. down the road yeah. when we have a new person right. i know Absolutely. i just wanted you to know that because i went back and checked because it looked funny to me <laughs> so then the uh and then the um the personnel board would make a motion to appoint raywoon balayak that's actually she's already appointed those are her terms what that is is more informational so you've got Finance committee that's going to put a new member on as of their meeting on the 13th. Uh, okay, under, oh, that's a vacancy? That's, it's a, so well, finance. John Pereski serves now, but that's going to switch to another member. And then who's but the we other can vacancy? Lisa Middens is rolling off this year. Erica Higgins Eric Ross is, is indicated to, to the committee tomorrow. that she's going to end tomorrow. her term. Yeah. Um, and then we had a vacancy out there anyway. So what makes it difficult so, is we're very lucky to have Eric and Raboon serving, um, but it makes it difficult for quorum purposes. Yeah. So I just wanted to so draw we that need to your finance. Attention. So finance committee needs to put somebody up. Who's the other vacancy? Is that a select board appointment? There's a select board appointment and there's also a the, moderator. Pardon? A moderator? Or who? No, no, I don't think moderator okay. has an appointment today. But we just have a lot of vacancies all of a sudden. Please because serve in your town government. It's a hard, it, you know, that's, that's a. This is a hard one to serve on. You know, I will say there's some confusion in the bylaws as well about what the role is because it's that bylaws over 40 years old and no. the roles of personnel boards have changed significantly. All right. So we don't have any appointments to make for personnel. No, board. I just wanted okay. to let you know that those were the changes I knew about based on my conversations. And so we have at email. least and two, we have at least two select board appointments. And the representative to the upper Pioneer Valley that I thought that was so that John says. So John says initially wanted to serve. Yeah. He's now declined the appointment. Ugh. Okay. So we need somebody to serve in that capacity. So put it out on we need actually you know what personnel board did a really great notice mm -hmm. that they need for vacancies i'll ask jennifer to send that to you because we worked it out and we had put it out a couple times on social media and it's very it's it's a it's a it's a good way to sort of remind people that there's i i would really like some um a veteran if we could mm. in their our community if they could Step Did somebody over. send me the language that you want on social media? And yeah, we've got it. I'll okay. I'll talk to you. To, I'll talk yeah. to you next week. Okay. It's really nice because I mean this is impactful. Mm -hmm. It can be. Or even I mean, somebody who, who some, cares somebody about veterans. Should, I, right, I know that there's somebody that will serve. They, they should have been. Idea. You know, this this our representatives should have been like making us be proactive. I mean, we did, but. We, we should be doing more proactive things like keeping the Holyoke Soldiers Home open. And, you know, I mean, we should be. Leeds is going to stay open, by the way. I know. Is it? That. That. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's great um, news. I'm so yeah. very. But close that's the to kind leave. of stuff yeah. that if we had someone that was active and cared about these issues, then mm -hmm. we could hear about them and then we could be more proactive ourselves instead yeah. of just hearing it secondhand. Okay. I mean, 
we did do stuff, but not not as well as proactively as we should have, I think. So that that is an element we can convey. And maybe if you can think of somebody that is a vet or is related to a vet or perhaps that really to cares a vet about the issue. That I mean, it's somebody that wants, wants to care. <laughs> That, that would like to serve. Yeah, it's at the time commitment isn't huge. It's no. It's I think three or four meetings at most during the year. Yeah. Um, and you're working with some really good people up in Greenfield. So we need to figure out uh, the zoning board appointments. Yep. Um, David Sharp has applied. Correct has applied. Him. So we we have to figure out. You know, I I personally I would really love David Sharp to be a full member. I just because he's an attorney and I think um, that would be very beneficial. Um, you know, there has been past practice of, of the alternates rolling up to be full members. Um, I don't know if that has to happen. Um, no, it doesn't have to happen. I, I'm just- um, Yeah, before we, I, I have some ideas about please. it. So when you're done, I'm, I'm, no, I'm going to express my opinion. I'd love too. to hear your I actually agree with you about Dave. I think he would be a good full member. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, um, I don't think that there's any urgency if we if we vote to appoint Dave tonight to, I, I'm still working to try and get others to apply. I've got a couple of people that I mentioned to Casey. One's an educator and mm -hmm. another person is a, uh, what did I say in my email? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, communications Collar. executive, can, yeah. communications yeah. executive. So nice. Got, um, uh, and, uh, you know, and yeah. so I think, in short order, we could probably find a, a, another person or persons to consider for the, the other vacancy, but both of the current alternates are full time. Well, one of them is a full time employee mm -hmm. is involved in about six yeah. different committees. Yeah, um, I don't think it would be a good idea to good idea to add another committee to right. this person's portfolio. And okay. um, the other person is also doing a lot more work for the town now is a town employee. Mm -hmm. And I think we would do ourselves a service. Uh, that person is working now in, in, in building and conservation capacities at the moment, filling in for people. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want if we appoint David Sharp, I think, you know, just leave it at that for, leave right, it at now. That for right now until we can get another, uh, I think within another month, we'll have a couple of people that we can consider. They might need, we might not decide to appoint them, but, um, I think that we can get through handshell lumber and anything that's kind of depressing. Well, that, that was the thing is that what came to my attention. If we have bigger projects where we definitely need quorum, then you have to make sure that everybody attends and the mm -hmm. alternates have to act in the capacity mm -hmm. of full members for quorum yep. purposes. So yeah, those, it just leaves the, yeah. it, it leaves some uncertainty with the committee because it really depends on the business that comes before them. But you know, that's, that's always an outlier. It's like personnel. You know, if we don't have enough personnel members for quorum, then we can't make decisions. Right, right. That's really important. The good thing about the two alternates that are on here now, I will say is that um, they do attend. They're so, they do. Good so they do. you, you, um, you know, the, the Adam Sokolowski as chair would have the ability to say, we're one member short, we need to appoint an alternate for this specific topic. Mm -hmm. And, and so I, I do think uh, the first thing is to figure out whether we think Dave's a good member. And, uh, I, 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 I served I with Dave on the school committee for several years. I find him to be a standing person, a very good deliberate thinker. And um, I think he would serve very well on that board. I, I feel very comfortable with him. So I would make the motion to appoint him. As a as full, full member. member. Yeah. And, um, I did reach out to him and suggest that he consider being uh, a member on this committee because of, and so I would second that motion. Okay. As uh, a full member. Any further discussion on that? All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, that's aye. And how do you feel about just holding on the rest or do you want to add anything for us? I, 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 I want us, I, I mean, I think we could, we can recruit further persons, but I also have, want us to, talk about the policy of having town employees as full members on regulatory boards. I, I mean, I, I still feel like it's inappropriate. So um, I think we need, I, I feel like we could recruit more people, but then also I think we need to have work and further discussion on how we wanna see that policy happen because 
Mm -hmm. how a regulatory board and the town employees just I, see, I know what you're saying. I, I, I get it. You know, I've I know had that was an issue that. last year and yeah, um, I, I, it was a little heated. I know. I know. But we worked through it. Um, no, I, I, I understand what you're saying. If we have I, a general policy, I, then it doesn't have to be personal. And that's not it should the point. Yeah, it's not personal. It's not personal. It's just mm -hmm. we should have a discussion that is deliberate and mm -hmm. the pros and cons mm -hmm. and then move on. Okay. So, yeah, and, and I think there's a couple of options. One is explore with the state and i don't know that any any other community has this whether the zba can become an elected office i don't know that that exists anywhere i've done some small amount of research on this and didn't see it anywhere yeah i almost think um, it has to be appointed and i think that maybe wrong. that's the zoning um the way statutes were written that was the intent originally was that they would be appointed mm -hmm. um the yeah. other the other thing is carolyn suggests is to come up with a policy because the state does allow town employees who live in town to run for certain offices. And I think that's a perfectly, mm -hmm. it, it leaves the decision to the voters. Right. Um, and so for instance, the planning board is totally elected by the voters. I yep. think that's appropriate. Um, I do have a similar concern to Carolyn that, uh, you know, town employees uh, on regulatory boards could, could pose problems for the town, the citizens who have to go before those boards and the person himself who's mm -hmm. or herself who's serving on those boards. So okay. I, I would like to develop a policy, but maybe not tonight. <laughs> Sounds good. I I'll, we'll take that under advisement. Kevin's still waiting. Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin. We dragged you on for no, no, that's okay. Yep. Hey, uh, mine was mine was just a quick heads up for you. The at the transfer station, we've got that swap shed on, yep. you know, the take it or leave it shed. And you know, we collectively spoke a year ago about we're not going to really allow the employees, town employees, to run that because of the confrontation that may happen between the public and um, the town employee. So I was talking with Ma Swedland today, and she says that she's going to be reaching out through the her contacts through the energy committee um, to see if she can find some volunteers. Now it may be open just one day a month, or it may be only Saturdays, or not sure exactly what, how it's going to detail, yeah. but she's going to be looking for some volunteers, you know, and, and right. there's nothing saying that, you know, you're there for eight hours a day. You know, we, we originally talked, well, maybe, maybe four hours on a Saturday, right. yep. um, you know, and if people want, they can split it up between two people, two hours a piece or for sure. know, how, however they want to do it. But I just wanted everybody to be well aware that Yes, we understand the, sh the shed is still there. Yes, we would like to utilize it, but I also want to make sure that the employees are protected from I agree. use. Yep, completely oh. agree. And thank you for still working on that and thinking about it. And and I appreciate MA looking into it too. Yep. I, I do think it needs to be a bit of a volunteer thing. Um, and we're just short staffed as it is to be dealing with that on top of it. It's, it's just too much, um, but I do think it's a good service. So yeah, that's I agree. I appreciate uh, yeah, yeah, walk before you run and just yeah, exactly. it's great. So so we'll figure out how it goes, but I just wanted everybody to be, you know, the board to be aware of what was going on. Yeah. Um, because all of this just transpired uh this afternoon. I have a question for you. I know we uh we ponied up some money at town meeting for the shed uh Correct. replacement. Yep. I I was never under the assumption that was really gonna get you much of a shed because it's not that much money but uh just well where you i want to say that we did what sixteen thousand. I, I believe was the, like that 15 yeah. or 16. 15, okay yeah. so so casey's shaking her head no 10. was it 10? 10 yes it got down to 10. yes oh you yeah you were there for every meeting and i complained yeah. at every meeting yes i think we 10. did I okay yeah yeah then i'm definitely <laughs> short presently right now i do have a quote for an eight by eight by 10 shed, which really isn't the size it's got to be. It's going to be a 10 by 10 shed yeah, with yeah. two windows, one man door, excuse me, personnel door on, um, and then insulated. It's got no electricity. It's got no this, no that, nothing else. That is all have to be separated out. Yeah. On um, right now, I believe the quote is $3,500 to tear the old one down and 9,500 to put the new one up. Yeah. So is the way it stands that. right now. Um, you know, we could we could go ahead and solicit more information. But yeah, I thought originally I thought we, we were going for like sixteen thousand for yeah. the. So, uh, because be honest with you, you know, really, you know, and, and somebody may think it's it's a luxury, but 
it really isn't for the guys that are up there. We really should have a mini split or yeah, the heating and cooling on there. Um, no. no, it's going to save the town money in the long run. It is. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not healthy it's to be up some, in that heat and yeah, that it's, cold. The heat I, is so awful in the I summer would, and uh, it's so cold in the winter. I would recommend we just kind of sit a little bit on that and see where we mm -hmm. come in the fall and see if we can pony up some more money from the uh, town in, in free cash or whatever it might be to, to actually build something. I mean, that thing's been there to, what, 15, 20 years, maybe? Oh, yeah, all of it, all of, four, all of 15, anyway. We're going to get our use out of that, and it should be a decent place to work. And, I mean, it's, it's not an extravagant thing, but just some insulation and some warmth and, like right. you said, a mini split and enough space to make it worthwhile. I think we well, really it, need to do that. they just have to have some place to cool down. So Sometimes the temperature is well over 100 degrees. Oh, especially they, have to, they have to take a break and cool down. It's just... It's not and, and in the wintertime too, I mean, these guys, you know, I'll give these guys a lot of credit mm -hmm. that, you know, especially for the ones that are, that are dealing with the recycling on, yeah. um, they, it's they've sweet. got an umbrella and that's yeah. it, it's you know, in rain, there should be another little box down there too, or something. I don't know. Cause it's miserable sitting out there. Which is something, you know, we could probably get something cheap yeah. that's on skids. You could drag around as needed. Right. You know, um, I agree with that. So let's look into that a little bit and try and yeah, I think we I know should. somebody will kick me by the time we get to mm -hmm. fall meeting, but I think it's important to just add some to that. I just Kevin, wasn't enough. Which, which thing there. is going to be torn down? I mean, a, the one where the um, is it near the compactor? Yeah, it's a uh, yeah, no. and and the trash one. Re, re, rebuilt in the same place. Yes. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah it would. Which basically trailer. what they do is they take the old shed down and put a new one up. But right. the way the one is you're looking at it now where it's got kind of like a walkway all the way two sides of it that one side to the west would not be a walkway that that would be building inside all the way so it basically yeah. um it would be a 10 by 10 building on a 10 by 14 pad yep which mm -hmm. is what it's on right now yep okay so that would give you a four foot walkway for yeah. Yeah. No, you know I, I, everything I that's be, rotting I, I oh it is it's horrible you know, I see large equipment up there that, uh, you know, bucket loader that just $3,500. It's got, oh, yeah. The, yeah. Wood yeah. Goes, the wood goes into the wood container. <laughs> why is, you know, why are we spending $3,500? I just asked that question. I mean, right. No, I, I, I can, I can agree with that wholeheartedly for the simple fact is, is, I mean, you know, we bring an electrician in and, and they just drop all the power out of it. Once, like you said, once the power's out of it, then we can do like we did with the, um, the softball, yeah um, thing and just skew it with a loader and pick it up and yeah. lay it down and crush it and be done with it yeah i yeah. agree let's do that yeah i mean once it's safe to no electricity or anything right. yeah then we tip it right into the to, crusher to put into the yeah. mini <laughs> Yeah. You can almost push it right into the compactor. Yeah, yeah, there, there you go. Um, <laughs> oh, wait, no, remember, it's got no power. Oh, right, right. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, well, very good. Thank uh, well, you all. Thank Appreciate you for that. Time. We'll, we'll keep on that for the fall. Um, we have a, another appointment. We have um, Max Shrell wants to um, be on the Cultural Council, which is wonderful. He's oh, in there, he's just not on the list. It it's a letter. In the, oh, a letter, a letter in the thing. In okay, so do you want to make I'll a motion? I'll make that motion. Okay. Thank you for volunteering. I'll second that motion. Yes. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nassa, aye. Now, did we appoint Bob Decker already for the CBA? He's, he's not up until next it's year. It's 2023. Year. Okay, so it's not yeah. this year. Okay, good. All right. Um, and we did DDIC already, right? Yes, yeah, you sure. did. That's what I mean. You started that's out. That's what with I just held on the list. Okay. Did a couple, did a few more in the 15th and had put holds on a couple of things i'd love to see the, the only thing list. you haven't addressed is emd emergency oh, management. yeah just put this away um, well the emd we we should have a meeting because remember one of the purposes originally was to have more of a team um team approach but we have to do it for hazardous so we have today. to wait till john comes back on vacation and sometime this summer we really need to um, I think we can apply, uh, appoint everybody to assistant or whatever, so there is some coverage, but I, I want to make sure that we're reorganizing this appropriately. Well, and I just want to make sure with the paychecks coming out next week that everybody's either we don't appoint anybody at the moment. Well, I think or we, we have juggle to it point... up later because I, I just got to make sure it's yes, yeah, that's why the there's 
you know, the EMD gets a certain amount. Right. I don't even think the assistant EMD has a stipend. No, there's no stipend for assistance. So, so do you want to just make them the all case, assistants at the moment? I, I think we should appoint everybody as assistant for the moment and then figure out how we're going to do this team approach. We had talked about it already. I know. But we haven't had a meeting with all the assistants. I mean, there's Zach Smith, there's John Pachora, there's Lori yep. um, McComb, yep. there's... Yep. Um, Kevin, I don't know. He I mean, wasn't on my list when I was reading it. So yeah, I only saw three names. But... I only saw three names. So do, well, do all we these were, people we were participate? Of putting yes. in Kevin. We were thinking of putting in Kevin as a highway department and fire person. Yeah. So they always participate. You know, Kevin. Well, it is a team effort, but you need one thing. I will say is you need somebody to lead the charge and be the conduit. I agree. Between the feds and the state, because. Yep. When that doesn't happen, it's very confusing. And that's, and that's John Pachurik in my mind right now. And yet we have. That is. The chief does most of that It work. does. He does. Um, I will say, you know, the COVID, I learned this from a friend of mine. COVID for people not with the structure we have, the EMD was the lead on a lot of that emergency response, not the Board of Health, the EMD, mm -hmm. because they had the connection to get to the Mima, information. All that through the response networks that the state had set up in various ways. So, well, you know, it depends on how different towns handle it. We, it's not that you don't have a team approach. I know we try very hard duties. to have a team approach, but it was also a capacity issue. We needed more capacity for long-term events. Absolutely. Like the COVID response. So yes. The idea was to revisit it just like everybody else is revisiting it through AARs, you know, after action report. Our whole thing was for us to revisit what we were doing well, because well, ours is really set up more like for flooding and stuff like that. We hadn't anticipated well, why don't we like have a COVID a, response. Why don't we call a meeting of all the people that are involved in emergency management and us? I mean, Tim's new. He needs yeah, to know, know how this all yeah. goes and, and, and what we Tim do. There's have, a lot of other know, things. Tim would have some good questions because he is Absolutely. new. That, that will generate maybe more discussion. We can talk well. about the... Right the Han, you know, get signed up for Han stuff. I mean, I think there's a lot of things well, that we all need to gather together and talk about that. But in the meantime, you still need legally, you need to have someone. So I think if we appoint John as the as the point Not, person, just because yeah. John is usually the responder, yeah. then, then let's figure out how we're gonna work with this coming. And we still need everybody listed mm -hmm. in case like John's on vacation yeah. this week. But okay. We need to get we we want EMS, we want highway, we want mm -hmm. you know everybody participating. So let's let's make Do you want to make a motion? Then? Yes. I will make a motion to appoint John Pachorik as our EMD. And I don't okay. know if we want to say acting EMD or just say EMD straight. EMD. Okay. And then um assistance would be Lori McComb, Zach Smith, um Kevin. Scarsville. Yep. And then and th and then we would um have call a meeting so that we can figure out how we're gonna set up our team. Yep. Or review what's happened in the past mm -hmm. and then how we're gonna move forward as a team. Because I think this is a huge this is a huge um especially if I'll, people start retiring. I'll that second thing. that list as a any further discussion? Yes. You already called it. No, I yeah. just I just second. The question it. is, is I just want to make sure I have the right names: John Pachurik, Lori McComb, and Kevin as assistant EMDs. Did I miss it? Zach, 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 Zach Smith. Yep. Thank you. Yep. So Zach, Lori, and Kevin are assistant, and uh, John is the EMD. Z Smith. Discussion. Well, and and no, no, for the vote, let's just vote, and then we should look at our calendars for yep. a meeting because otherwise it just gets. Tim Hilchey, I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. So we should try to set up a meeting sometime this next month. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to take the off? Well, the off Wednesday on the 20th is a CCI meeting. Do you want to um, do an off meeting on this? On June, well, July 6th is next week. August 3rd. Um, okay. You want to do a meeting on August 3rd? Yeah. Okay, that's far enough out. Hopefully, people. Yeah. And that's before maybe Zach is on, um, you know, leave. 
Oh, right. Because he's going to have a baby. Oh, I'm so, so happy for him yes. and both of them. That's very exciting. Just very happy. So maybe we can get Zach to um, okay. participate before. Six o'clock or something? Yeah, Just let's do now. six o'clock okay. on August 3rd. Is that going to be a select board meeting or is it yes so that would be a, be a select, select board, board meeting slash, for this purpose yeah for emergency, yep, for management, emergency management yep yep emergency um management team and meeting. what time did you say six o'clock on the third okay all right so we're done with that at the moment can i just ask one quick question sure you can um so going back to the cheryl appointment to cultural council Mm -hmm. Carolyn made the motion. Did you second the motion, Tim? I think I seconded, seconded it. Okay. It. Yep. yep. And then you guys did vote it, right? Yes. Okay. That's. I just and to and I just want to um, make a notice that uh, Jennifer Remillard is is has resigned from the three hundred and fifty steering committee. Okay. She's, because Still on she the wanted to focus more on the Friends of Deerfield yep. committee. Fundraising. Okay. Fundraising. It was turn. It was just too much to be on both. Yep. So the mail. So we've thank done you, already, Jennifer. I think, right? Have you done the mail? Yeah, um, you've got mail. I just want Casey or Trevor. Maybe you could read um, the Detwell letter. I thought that was a lovely letter. The what? Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. It was a nice letter. Do I have it here? Oh, it's probably in my packet. Yeah. So. Here it is, yeah, right Trevor. I said it's right here and I couldn't get my fingers on. So this is dated June 23rd, uh, 2020. Dear John Pachurik, Junior Chief of Police, we want to thank the Deerfield Police and other law enforcement agencies that were involved with the incident on Lower Road that occurred last Friday, June 17th. Most mornings we wake up to the serenity of birds singing and our only worry regarding crime is whether or not the fox has managed to steal an egg from next door and leave the empty shell somewhere in our yard. However, last Friday was anything but serene. There was uh, a large police presence, including a van broadcasting via loudspeaker and numerous police officers in SWAT gear who are attempting to serve warrants on our next door neighbor. There have been ongoing and serious issues with this neighbor who may who seem um, to be some some issues. Um, as the incident unfolded, an officer came to our home and informed us of what was transpiring. He asked us to shelter in our basement or you know, that we were out of harm's way. He also took our phone number and followed up um, when it was safe to emerge, which he did when it was all over. It took several hours to, to resolve, but eventually everything appeared to come to an end without uh, the needs for any violence. Um, the entire incident seemed to be handled in a very professional and successful manner, manner which um, can be difficult when, when, um, when dealing with, with these kind of situations. Um, while our day uh, could go on without incident, we know that uh, you and other officers had to face the next challenge. We appreciate that each day you and your fellow officers confront and handle many challenges in order for us and our uh, fellow citizens to enjoy the serenity of living in Deerfield. Um, we are sure that your loved ones worry about your safety to, uh, to their thoughts. We add our own and that, um, that at the end of each day you return home safely. Sincerely, uh, Rita and Rob uh, DeWalter. DeWalter? Detwiler. Detwiler, Detwiler. thank you, um, from Lower Roads. Yeah, thank you very much. Was it was nice, letter. nice letter. Yeah. They do a great job, and they are very um, in harm's way many times, and uh, really appreciate all the work they do. Um, I The other mail item, one of the other mail items, was the um, request by Deerfield Academy for a tax exempt. Um, Obviously, if the property is see it. being it used wasn't in your for list, it was in. It was in, in your, here. It was in your. Yeah, oh, it was in okay. Your, um, Sorry. Obviously, if if the property is being used for faculty and they have students there, I, I it's a request for this six Taylor Road to um, have another tax exempt property taking off the list of properties. In Deerfield, can we say I, no? I no, I, it's legitimate request. However, I think we should review um, what 
um, housing is not used by faculty that is still um, not on our tax rolls. For an example, um, you know, facilities director's um, house. Um, that's not Matt, house, Matt Sheehy's own residence. I mean, he doesn't have students at his house. I mean, the, the requirement of personal residence to have, you know, tax exempt property is because they, the students are there. If students aren't using these properties, then, so I think we should have a full review of the properties. And, um, you know, look at this request in context to um, what are the other properties are being used for. This is a request because there is faculty housing there and that students might use it. Well, mm -hmm. what about the housing that is not used um, for student use? So I, I think it's a I think it's a good request. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm certainly supportive of it because a faculty member is there and it makes sense that you know kids will go there for extra help or meetings or whatever, but certainly they have housing that does not have student use. And so we need we should have a full review. Okay. And I will I would like the minutes to reflect that we're asking the assessors um, to do a review of the properties um, because of this request. Okay. I mean that makes sense to me. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I think it would be reasonable to uh, examine whatever properties are don't fit under the tax exempt rules. Uh, so if this is a good a good uh, reason to do that. Makes sense to me. Okay. Any other mail? That was it. Town administrator report. Want to hit on anything? So, a couple of things. Uh, we're conducting interviews for administrative assistant for land use and inspection. Great. We've had three to date. We have one more. Actually, four to date. We have one more. Um, we also have received several responses to the interim town clerk. So, we're starting to go oh, through good. those. Well, um, we haven't, we did put it out on the list, sir. And we're trying to find other places to put it, but we really are starting to get MMA. to crunch time. So MMA, did you put it up? Yeah, um, MMA, it's interim. So that's the problem. It's interim and it's short term and that may be an issue, but nevertheless, we're looking and Jennifer's doing a good job of sort of reviewing things as they're coming in and we're, Jen, she and Jen Wallace are sort of, you know, mm -hmm. trying to, clarify different elements of people's responses. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't have somebody for inspections. We put it on there just in case we did. Um, the, we're following several projects that are going on and Brenda and I have started going through the end of year work. The end of the fiscal year is tomorrow. We've gone through most of the questions we had in our appropriations there's going to be several transfers finance committee is meeting on the 13th at five o'clock right before you guys meet or right around the time you guys meet um so what she and i are doing is structuring where we think we should be asking for money whether we should be doing some between accounts or some through direct reserve fund transfers. Sometimes that's easier. Yep. But if you recall, our reserve fund is down to around $40,000. Yeah, it's not a lot in there. So we may, may have to make some adjustments. Okay. Um, one thing that I will let you know is we've got to pay attention as we're going forward to some of the transitions we've budgeted for. Uh, I do know that, that Jennifer's been working with the planning board, the chair, and a couple of other people on getting planning services and it'll include both work with the, the cog and work with pvpc okay. so they were refining what that was great um and they've you know they brenda and i were just talking to another member of the planning board about another issue so they're trying to refine some of the regulations some of their fees so we're doing that kind of work to assist them um in in the midst of 
trying to keep up with a lot of the other departments. I'm behind on three public records requests because I just don't have the staff to sit and go through things. Mm -hmm. So you will see letters about it. I'm quite sure. I'm doing I the best it. I can, but I know there's, you are. there's I know only you are. so much. Yep. Um, the other piece here is we've got, so Jennifer and I have some, we have a professional development meeting tomorrow that we're both going to. Um, and then we're really gonna dig into moving forward some of the transitions we need to make because we need to be able to get to transition Jennifer into doing more of the budget work and mm -hmm. Bill's payable work, monitoring the budgets because that's a task that I really need her to be doing so I can be focusing on other things. And some of the elements of HR, they're starting to take over a lot of time. So it really impacts our ability to work certain tasks on top of our daily tasks. So I just need you all to be aware of that. Yep. And we also have to um, work with, because Brenda's going on vacation and she and I have had this conversation a couple of times. She's got a strategic plan in her head to get free cash done. Right. And because we're aware of so many things that we think we need to have on the warrant for an upcoming town meeting, that's very critical. Yeah. So we have an outstanding issue, for instance, with unemployment. We may actually have to request funds. I agree. To with settle, that. we need to settle that. An unemployment issue. Should call. Um, out there. There's also something that I wanted to bring to your attention. I think there's a piece of paper at the end of your mail. Yeah. It isn't in the list. I think it's from Maya. I think I gave it to you. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. So this came unemployment in today. Services. And it relates to insurance and actually to unemployment insurance. So Maya is now offering, this first year is free, but Maya is now offering unemployment um, oversight coverage for us. We have to opt into it. And it may be that over the years, it's very similar to what I see in our IOD insurance, which is the injured on duty insurance for police and fire. What they're doing is they're going to start us off and they would hi they've hired two companies to work with towns that are Maya towns to monitor unemployment insurance claims and to help towns make decisions about how they're impacted from a personnel perspective or an HR perspective. So UTMC is the company we've used in the past to help us with our own unemployment uh, complaints or or insurance, our response to unemployment claims. This new company has more of an HR bent. And so I want the board to tell me whether you would, I think this is a good opportunity for us. I think it's an excellent opportunity mm -hmm. and I would actually make this motion. You don't even need to say anymore. No, I agree with that. I thought uh, you might. <laughs> given the yeah. facts of our long you history no, of no, no, incorrect yeah. claims, yeah. I think, you know, and having to fight those incorrect mm -hmm. claims, yep. I mean, it's been horrible. It's so, I mean, lot. I remember Mary Stokarski going back and forth for one for like months. Yep. And we were charged a mm -hmm. whole bunch of money. On and that. we still actually owe interest on that. What do they I charge per year? Do you know? I know they That's said the first year. We, Brenda and I are going yeah, to bring back to you. We've yeah, bring it back. That. Yeah, figure that stuff out. But I'm And, and there's going to be a monetary settlement but we'll need to give you that information. So I you're know, gonna see but that this is why this is a good deal. Because exactly. Well, that's what I'm wondering, how much they up. charge per year? Well, right, the first year it's free. Right, but What's after gonna that. What's gonna happen next year is we will give, they'll give us um, some sort of a- It's gonna be like general insurance. They're gonna give you a price based on your risk exposure. Right, and I just wonder, they to should check. have So if you wanna increase elements of your risk exposure, increase your coverage, that's where it'll cost you a little more money. We do it with injured on duty or 111F claims all the time. Right. This is a wicked good deal right now. And then we evaluate it. And also Next year. we can budget for if we want additional coverage because, right. you know, they, they will it have could someone. Be useful. Right. They will have someone, Track. Uh, you know, sort of like tracking it, but also uh, evaluate us as a risk because right. we don't know. I mean, it's, it's true. You know, we yeah. get occasionally we get a problem, but don't forget. This will cover the schools too. That's the huge part and of it. And that's a huge problem yeah. for us. Yeah, so absolutely. For a huge exposure. So yeah. that's why I think this is a I, good idea. I think yep. 
I think I'm just sneaking really... that in at the end, huh? I, I got it today. So I've I actually had Brenda and Sarah look at it too. <laughs> I already Good. made the motion. Good work. Is there a second? I second it. Yeah. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nasson. I, I I would like to know. I would like to sit down yeah, and just meet an with update. them though. Yep. Sometime during the year, Casey, so that we can get a handle on how they're evaluating us as a risk. Um, I, I I don't know how that's going to happen. I haven't even had a chance to talk to no, Matt. I know. Me just, message, I know. But <laughs> relay back up, to us when you're ready. Sign us up, yep. and then just find out. Since it's free, the first year it doesn't matter. But I want to know how they're evaluating and what factors they're evaluating us and stuff, and, and then how they're structuring their charge for the following year right yep. it, if it's similar to how the uh iod works it's going to be a whole like schedule page of i know but because yeah, we're small we'll because we're in general small we will pay a small amount i think if it's based on what she's talking about yeah but yeah i want to know what else because we don't have a, a specific hr person that might be a surcharge in the risk um mm -hmm. you know casey just handled it or whoever yeah we just it. well what we used i used to handle it in nashville i let john handle the 111f information right. and, and we don't have a dedicated human resource department right right so that That's might be a surcharge in the you know the billing right. so we need to find out what yeah. the factors are and how that how our risk piles okay out. but moving on right now i think it's a good thing um, I do want to let you know, especially Carolyn, because I got another mailing from Maya. And if you recall, we get credits for a lot of the mm -hmm. participation we do, like 111F training I did three months ago, <laughs> which is useful. Um, and so you get those credits back and you can apply those credits to different types of grant programs they have. They have cybersecurity risk assessment programs that I am going to sign us up for because I want to go through that. And that risk assessment does some of the things that will hit targets to help us lower our insurance costs. Can we just do this? Can well, we not just do it's, this? it's actually a way to, for we, us to we, utilize our credit have been, proactively. Casey and I, I have been, been yes. participating in Homeland Security and they tell Cyber us to do this stuff. Is. And they promise <laughs> to do this is right. And they but and I feel seeming, yeah. seemingly uninformed now as I was before. I don't know how you feel. What, what it, basically what it means is we go through their grant program and they provide us access to certain measuring tools that help us assess our own risk. And then when we have some of that information, we're more able to even look at these grants and look at how we can proceed. But what, we've had two incidences and I really would like to what, see what, two what Homeland three. Security was supposed to do to Second one. The second the one? The Comstar, which yeah, is a yeah. third party one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. what, yeah. we, what we were hoping to get out of the Homeland Security one was a response plan. And we sort of did, but- It needed other elements to it. And there are elements that I think if we can get some resources, from Maya, we can start to build the information sources we need. I'll but trust the main you. thing is our insurance, our insurance is cheaper. So for we for that reason alone, we should do it. So I'm recommending it. So I was gonna do it. I just wanted to tell you guys because I knew what she was gonna say. She's just gonna go do but it. But I <laughs> all right, go ahead. Next so, next item. I would be really concerned knowing that cybersecurity is in my hands. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll, do, I'll, I'll make sure that we have access to it. And then I'll we, second that up. Yeah. Yeah. That <laughs> I would be a little worried. I'll second that emotion. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, no, this is from Maya. I have good intentions, but yeah. I'm, I'm really not that All great. Right. Anything else? What what will happen is, is we'll do the training internally and then we'll pass out the information and go see what we can find for more support. I, I just think we need a ro more robust plan. And I'm very disappointed that that hasn't happened. And we were supposed to, that was supposed to be the product no, of- Nope, I think that was it. Um, There's only one signature. Our participation. And, and that just didn't happen really. Anything else? So the- Huh? I don't know. I haven't found that out yet. That's why you got to do Probably this. Probably 
It's not I'm great. Get my gavel out. Five percent. Five percent. So the next thing I wanted to talk to you about is this item unanticipated. Okay. So Bob came to me. He's going on vacation. I only found he found out he was going on vacation um, Monday. Bob Walden. Bob Walden, and he needs somebody to cover inspection. So mm -hmm. you guys hadn't voted um, Dick to be the building inspector, right? So Bob has a request either to have the authority to hire somebody to come in and cover as a local inspector yeah um or you could you could appoint dick for a temporary period of time to cover for him but he's gonna need somebody to cover at least inspections maybe not permit processing but inspections how long is he gone for he's gone from the 11th to the 25th okay um well, we he do does have some relationships that he's building with some of the other towns. And that would fact, be I beneficial. Think I think he's talked to Montague. It's just, I don't know if he can get somebody in here. And that's what he said to me this morning. Well, we he can't doesn't know if he can get anybody. another person. We can't in. appoint anybody before July 11th. Unless right. we have another meeting anyway. Well, that's why he's asking for the authority to hire somebody to come do that work. Yeah. Um, I mean, or, I would rather him build the relationships with the local people around. So that he covers and they cover and like that's what they tend to do as they get to know each other. Yeah. So I know mm -hmm. he's been talking to Montague about it. Um, okay. But the reason is is he needs somebody to cover right now. Mm -hmm. So, you guys, how do you want to do it? Do you want do, to do a temporary appointment for Dick to do it, or do you want to do delegate the authority to hire a local inspector to Bob, so he can get somebody in here? Can he find On an somebody? Basis. Can he find somebody? Oh, I'm sure he can. Well, then yeah, but I, yeah, but we can't. We have to appoint him, and we don't. If have you delegate meeting. appointing authority to Bob, then you don't have to appoint him. And keep in mind that Bob appoints two of your other disciplines. He appoints to plumbing, and he appoints to yeah, wiring. Yeah, but that's regulatory. I'm talking about. Uh, I don't think we can delegate that. I. I don't believe we can delegate. You can authorize somebody to be an appointing. Person. You can authorize your town administrator to do that too. It's all in how you're, how comfortable you are. Um, I don't have a name for another person because Bob doesn't have a name for another person. That's what we talked about. So, but he does need somebody to cover on the 11th, beginning on the 11th. He's taking two weeks. So, um, well, I have a question. Would we be? I mean, she knows more about this. Right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, thirty days for a. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I no, didn't mean ahead. to jump in. No, no, please. I was wondering, like, so he goes on vacation. Do you have to have somebody that day? I mean, you should have some coverage. You have to have something. If there's a fire, you if, have you, to if have there's it. some, okay. yeah, you for an emergency, you definitely right. have to have coverage. Something like that. You've got to. I mean, okay, so I'll go back to my yeah, question. Was, <laughs> Sorry, would, would we feel comfortable um, giving Casey, at least in this instance, specific instance, the authority to approve Bob's decision? A local inspector, yeah. I, uh, I don't have a problem with it, but yeah. I just don't think statutorily that we can do that. But what do you mean? I don't. I don't think it's allowed for us to to give that um, ability to Casey. I don't think. Because well, the building commissioner is regular. I feel good. There's that. such a regulatory, I mean, the building commissioner kind of thing is just like Board of Health. They're so regulatory. I think the regulations mm -hmm. do not allow that, but that's why Maybe. it's so strict. Well, Maybe. okay, then what about this? So I'm just asking questions here. Yeah. Would we be able to authorize Bob to arrange with a neighboring building inspector department to fill in? while he's away yeah we did if, that all we have or, to do is get the meeting together. or do we have to have a, a name like joe smith from turner's is going to come over here yes and we, we have, have to, to we have to appoint that person that's what, that's what just like we do for we alternate we building, did that last uh, time. alternate health inspector mm -hmm. no we have you to, do it for two things but we, he does it for other things we yeah we did it when montague covered for us last time right we, we appointed that gentleman Dave jensen yes i think Dave that's jensen. who it was right yeah, yeah. Right. to I, I do that yeah, but I don't well, think can, we're here. Pull I don't know if we can get together. Just let us know. I don't know if we can get together. So 
we, well, you don't we even have a, a date. We just have, to, we just have to, to post the meeting so that we can do it. I know, but I have to schedule it for all of you guys. And it's the summer. He's going away on vacation. Um, I'll, I'll be gone for a couple days. I mean, I'll, I'll be back on the 6th. All right. So I'll see. Well, if let us know if we can find name. somebody. Yeah. In the meantime, I mean, if you have somebody in mind, this might be. You we know. only need two people to get together to have a quorum. Yeah. Right. You could appoint Dick on a temporary basis if you wanted to do that. I mean, that um, could be a fallback position. Yeah. yeah. I, that so could be your fault. Yeah. Let us know what we find okay. for people. Um, is that it? I Are have, we done with the meeting? Well, oh, actually, come on. You're I know. Stretch so, so, on. So I gave sorry. you your time earlier. I know. No. I, I completely forgot. Go um, ahead. No, I'm teasing. Comment yes. Did you make a comment? Period? Have a comment? No. Uh, I would like to do some research uh, in regards to the uh, investigating into food trucks having a seasonal permit. If uh, that's something yes. that we can discuss next meeting, perhaps. Sure. Please. Um, some info. And then I'm interested in two grants. Uh oh, Carolyn opens her eye wide. Oh my gosh, did the ceiling move? No, well, um, I'm just a little discouraged with the NATO grant not being able to get our hands on the money. Oh, we'll get it. We'll okay. get it. I know. Yeah, and so I Peter know. and I were working on that. Um, he also sent a message out. Um, this involves the National Environmental Health Association in conjunction with the FDA to be looking at retail food standards and um, pretty much providing a, a backup uh, food inspector. Uh, for like seven years through this grant, if that's something that we're interested in. Uh, Depends sure. on how much work is required on our staff. I mean, okay. if it's something that can be done, great. I'm, I'm all for grants and like getting uh, well, more nefarious. And it ranges between twenty-five to uh, seventy-five thousand dollars a year. So, yeah. what were you gonna say? Sorry. Well, <laughs> the problem the, the, the news? FDA. Once you adapt the FDA standards, which is slightly different than the Massachusetts. Well, we, yeah, they follow the 2013 code. So anyway, um, I just would be leery because Dick and I are FDA certified. We went to the three day class and it really was disappointing. For the standards? Yeah. Retail one? Okay. Yeah. All right. I don't and know. then the I second mean, one is uh, a CDC one uh, looking at closing the gap of social determinants of health, uh, working with um, community members. Um, so hospitals, uh, buses and whatnot, transportation, schools, uh, and just seeing where there are gaps when it comes to public health. Um, and uh, that would be about a hundred, you can be awarded up to 150K. Um, and it seems like something that um, Deerfield would be um, kind of interested in um, maybe looking at later. Um, just some things to uh, maybe consider for future discussion mm -hmm. or something like that. Okay. So, and that's pretty much it. Thank you. Um, I had a couple of things. I wanted to know um, if we, who's, who's following up with Karen Polito and you know our request to have the meeting? Oh, Tim, you are? Did you have any response from? That? I haven't had any response. Um, and uh, so it's on my, I have a phone number now to call and somebody okay. in the office and, you know, just to make sure that they received the letter because it went in through the public portal, which is mm -hmm. very non, you know, specific. We, we really want to get her yeah. out here and yeah. I don't want to let it yeah. fall off the yeah. table. And, uh, Denise and I, Denise Mason and I spoke about it last week. Okay, perfect. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, the rural funding, uh, school funding. You know, my big thing is that really the school funding is not sustainable. So Marguerite Willis had called me about this, the study that has identified, you know, that um, Natalie Blay co-chaired. And I really think we need to follow up on it. And I didn't know if you had any, if you guys had any ideas what we should be doing on it. Um, because we had our meeting, you know, the select board mm -hmm. association decided to move forward. So should we have a, a not try to, uh, you know, schedule another meeting, which the whole focus would be on the rural funding? Because, I mean, the report just came out. So 
I mean, we really, we want to get organized for the new governor to come in saying, look, you're underfunding rural, our rural schools by 40%. I mean. You need a revenue fund, right? Yes. And I don't know where you get the revenue from. That's the well, hard part. The 700 million that uh, they want to give back to taxpayers. <laughs> well, yeah, they better not. But the, that's the kind of thing we would be protesting. We should be protesting. On, and that money should come to Western Mass mm -hmm. if if it moves forward at all. So I, I don't know how you wanted to do it, but I, I just wanted to bring it up so that, I mean, because we never have a chance to talk about stuff. I know. And no, I, I no. want us to think about what our next step would be on this. Because I, I think pursuing educational funding is key to balancing our budgets. Our budgets are not going to be able to be balanced. I mean, it is this past year, even with ARPA funding and all these extra COVID dollars, I mean, it was, we, we are not balancing our budget. And we really have to make an effort to try to get more money for schools. It's just- And regionalize our elementaries. Yeah. Would it, um, would it make sense to, or would you be comfortable with me writing an email under, for our names to Natalie say, what is your advice about how we can support this? Perfect. Yeah, that's great. And Kim. then she can Thank say, you, you know, get all the select board people or you know, yeah. whatever. Then sure. I'll see see Casey and Jennifer and I think that's um, great. So I'll get that out in the morning. Tim, Tim, that would be beautiful. I, I just feel like we need to keep the ball rolling and not just let it go off the radar because all of us are going bankrupt trying to fund our schools properly. Okay. And then the other thing is that maybe you said out of this. We could be talking about, I know, school choice, you know, having someone look at school choice because school choice, I mean, our numbers. We do here. Great. We need to regionalize our elementaries. I know. I know. That's and the then key it to be, all of it. It wouldn't be so right. desperate. But anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. The, then the other thing is, um, has anything turned up on steam mill lately? Nothing's come up on the radar. Okay. That's We're waiting still, for somebody, right? Waiting. Well, the state joined the, state. the lawsuit. We're waiting to see the and state how the state approaches it. Okay. okay. And then the final thing is, um, we have the three hundred and fifty meeting on um, Mon on uh, Monday night, and I just was the the project, you know, the filming project is of interviews and the mm -hmm. training is. I mean, it's really key. It is key, but it can't be funded by the. What's it called? The, I know access. it can't peg access. No, there's there's about a thousand dollars of equipment, and Jonathan's going to look it over and see if maybe it's eligible. But so we're still so now we're down to eleven thousand, and um, but the the thing about our previous um, celebrations, if it, if they were Yankee mm -hmm. centric. This this three fiftieth with these stories and interviews. Of um, is really about our Polish Im immigrants and our Ukrainian immigrants mm -hmm. and their stories before people pass. And I, I think you would generate a lot of really interest. Mm -hmm. um, and the hesitation on the steering committees um, on Monday night was we only have at the end of the, you know, all our appropriations for four years, we only have $40,000 from the town and we're hesitant to use so much of it because we, you know, have the big, we have the parade, we have the fireworks mm -hmm. and stuff that we might have to have a deposit on. And although the Friends of Deerfield are working really hard and all that, uh, and we anticipate that they will be successful, it's just using up that money right now is a little scary. So I'm just wondering how, if, if we could think about a way we could fund it to get it going now so that people could see the interviews right by the fall. I think that would be. Really I don't key. know where we'll use the money from, but I'm all supportive of it. I think we need to we need to go after our businesses and ask for money. Do you think? I don't know where, if, where else to get we it. Used, if we use the three fifty money, because we have money in the account, right? And it looked like we what were. What kind of money are we talking about? Eleven thousand dollars. It's a lot of money. Eleven thousand dollars for people to volunteer, do interviews, and, and no, 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 no. It's, it's a training. It's 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 training hours plus twenty five interviews where the um the people the volunteers go out and. And is that just doing the training? Is doing the training? No, the training is a, a company 
um, the Kleins. It just seems like that's a lot of money. Actually, it's I wicked cheap. It for more. Um, it's no, it, it, for what we get, it's it's really inexpensive. It's um, there's a thousand dollars for five um, different classroom hours, uh, you know, five evenings. Plus, there's four hundred dollars for travel to go for the whole project. But they do twenty five interviews, and they who are, does the interviews though? The clients. It's a couple that have. They're they're really so. Jonathan, who are you training? Jonathan, you um, could why don't you talk about it because you know more about it than I do. But it's seventy five hundred dollars is for the people to do the interview. You know, to the volunteers to sit with the clients as they do the interviews and then show people how to archive them and you know edit them and stuff like that. So it's it's this huge long process. It's actually really inexpensive. Um. Dollar wise. Oh, there and and Chris has the web page. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey. yeah, I met with them a few weeks ago. They and you've been pretty impressed with their training, right? I I haven't been attending it. I know a few other people have, and they say that they've been impressed. So, so let me just understand. We're um paying them who are the volunteers um well like marie thomas and who do we have enough people that are actually going to step up and do this I and are, are they going to be in, in, i mean well, i'm just Jonathan, worried about spending the money and then you wind you're up training your staff really your volunteer staff right right um one of the things i do want to do with the station is open it up and try to recruit more of a community interest, more volunteers to come in. So mm -hmm. that is one of the things I'm looking into doing. I think it's a um, huge opportunity for people to get excited about the 350, but also maybe get some kids involved, younger kids, um, because they could get the training and do the filming and be mm -hmm. trained in this kind of endeavor, which is, uh, there's no, there, obviously there would be some kind of limit, but they are open to as many volunteers as, as will show up. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, if we can do a good recruiting, you know, through the schools or whatever, I, I, it's just a huge opportunity to start the ball rolling and get people really excited about the 350. That's all. And it changes the aspect of the 350 celebration from, you know, what, the colonial kind of thing versus, you know, more current. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, and it's sad to say, we need to do these interviews as soon as possible because people's health, sometimes people's health is not that great. And they pass, their stories are now lost. I do know though, like um, if the training's not possible, like I've done a lot of like oral history type videos. I know Kevin's done a few things, I mean, mm -hmm. We can train people too through FCAT, which could be like, I've done a few things, I've gotten awards, so yeah. I'm not brag. But, <laughs> so, I mean, if it's not possible, we can certainly come up with a substitute as well. So, I mean, we can certainly help guide people. I guess I was looking for the select board to support some extra money on if, if we ended up feeling stressed about using our money now in October, we might, you would be supportive of a more I, I am supportive of, of additional money. I don't think $40,000 is anywhere near enough to do a 350th anniversary. Well, it's not. I know average... we, we, we looked at 10,000 a year because we were worried that the finance committee would freak oh, out. No. This is a 350th anniversary. We need to pony up a little bit more money if we can find it in, in all that we need to do as a town. To, so, to you, actually, so you wouldn't be I adverse? Am, no. Okay. Okay. Uh, That's all I needed to but go I, back to the committee. But we'll want to be really um, I think this training clear is about what yeah. we're, we're spending the money on for finance committee and our residents. Mm -hmm. But if there's well, a Peter, more economical I can way have to do our it. Next, our next meeting in July, um, but we'll, we have to, we're having a, an extra meeting of the 350th next week to discuss this mm -hmm. based on your conversation. So we will move forward with our recommendation to, you know, 
to do the tr training. And I can have Peter Thomas come with Marie, who's been um, doing the training to explain why it's a good investment um, on the 13th, if that's okay. So that you know that we're, you know, cause I'm not articulating the depth of mm -hmm. the training. I have two questions. One is um, who did the, uh, there were, I don't know, remember which town meeting was, but there was a town meeting where there were videos of residents who were telling their stories. Oh, that was PVMA. They right. did um, uh, they did some of the initial Polish uh, yeah. interview, mm -hmm. Polish immigrant interviews. And they did it with their own money, with money that we provided the... No, they did it through a grant. Um, I think it was a, a Department of Interior grant. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Was and, it? it was a federal grant. Though. Okay. And the second question then is, um, uh, Jonathan mentioned that FCAT could come up with some sort of plan proposal. Um, would that involve us paying additional money to FCAT? No, because we, I would use it as a, if we were put on our own programs, like a, I know Kevin Murphy and I as well want to start getting like some teaching stuff going. Like yeah. I have techniques I want to share and that would be sort of like our outreach that we would be doing so I mean that wouldn't be like extra mm -hmm. funds that you would have to pay us that would just be part of the services and like the the amount that we invoice you guys quarterly so that's what that would be towards so mm -hmm. yeah um, so I'm mean, just exploring alternatives um, that may achieve similar ends without the same expense uh, but I'm open to this as well. No, that's fine. I just didn't know how you felt so that um, I can have Peter come at our next meeting just to mm -hmm. explain. Yeah, the oral well, history is important. It yeah. is. And, um, and, and that way we have a better understanding. I can uh, send you guys some links to some stuff I've done. I did a nice one of my first documentaries I did when I got hired was I did a piece with Chris Collins on the Sutherland Bridge of Ferries, but then I did an oral history piece with Lois Bean out in Whiteley on the trip she did through um, their 4-H club to Japan that came out really nice and got second place in the contest. So nice. I oh, can, Jonathan, that's really great. That was back in 2020. I got that right before everything yeah. got a little nuts, but uh, yeah, certainly we we have the skills and the talents, so right. we can certainly provide a backup if this doesn't quite go through. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Well, and and I think if you look up the clients, or I can have Peter Thomas send you some links before next week, next okay. meeting too, yeah. so you can look at kind of the caliber of the program. I just know that from what I'm hearing, it's it's really wonderful, and it would be a way to get the ball rolling. Yeah, on our interviews. Okay. Motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I will second that. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you.